Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape. We're back at All About Bikes with Matt here. We're gonna be unboxing and putting together the Aventin Adventure. If you are looking to purchase one of these electric bikes, please consider using the link in the description as it makes videos like this one possible. I will also have links to our electric bike discounts code page, our electric bike accessories list, as well as our top e-bike brands page. Purchases made through links within those pages also help support the channel, so thanks in advance. With that, let's unbox the Eventin Adventure. Be sure to team lift the event and adventure. It is 73 pounds after all. And before you comment to simply cut the box open, I actually recommend against doing this in case the bike has to be returned. I started the assembly of the event and adventure with the front fender install. You'll want to do this before you attach the front wheel and be sure to put the fender in its highest position with that center bolt to avoid any clearance issues with those fat tires. Then the bike was ready for the professional to take over. All right, so we're gonna get the uh, pedals on here, get the handlebars, stem, all that. And then we'll go ahead and put the front wheel on as well. Got a bolt on instead of a quick release. So we're just gonna make those nice and snug. Putting the pedals on. We always like to do a little bit of grease on there. I like my little grease gun here. Is there a specific grease that you uh, recommend using if people wanna pick some up? Um, I do really like this uh, finish line because the white grease, you can tell when it's getting dirty. I'll do the packaging on here, the premium grease. And it's just really nice to have a little grease gun too, right? I mean, you can use the tub grease, which, you know, I think uh, a lot of bike shop folk people is kind of what they use. But uh, in reality, you really don't need that much grease. You just need it in the right spot. So I'm just putting a little bit on the, on the threads of the pedals. Make sure you're checking your right and your left pedals. And then the easiest way that I remember this is you're threading it on like you'd be pedaling it onto the bike. Uh, the left hand side is going to be reverse thread. Our sticker might, might be in the way here. It is nice to have that on there. We'll take that off. And I get to go ahead and do it this way because I'm working out of a bike stand and have the luxury of it. So I'll get that started. I'll get the other side started. It's nice because they do have the sticker on there. Um, and that's gonna be reverse thread on this side. And so Venton includes a pedal wrench. Get uh, the 15 to put on the pedal pedals and then uh, the 19 will be, I would assume that's for the back. Yep, it's gonna be for your back to take the back wheel off. And then the 15 is going to be for the, the front wheel, and we'll tighten it down with that. So pedal wrench, we're going to get that on there. And just go ahead, spin it backwards. And then nice and snug on here. I think I'll go ahead and get the handlebars on first. Take off your little grommet here. 
That just protects it from rust and water. We'll set that aside. Five mil up top. This is the point in which we definitely want to hold your fork because it can drop out. Now, obviously, if you're installing this on your floor or something like that, you could then, actually put the front wheel down. Yeah, and that's that's not a bad way to do it at all. I think for your average average person that's going to be the easiest or if you got a friend right yep. <laughs> we all need a friend to help us put together an e-bike right not quite as bad as the person that or as good as the person that you need to call when you're moving right <laughs> huh. there we go that's not how we're going to have our handlebars i'll tell you that but we'll get this mounted up. Again with the five mil. Holding lots of tension on the bottom of the fork so it doesn't fall out. Once that's snug, then I can take my hand off down below. Yeah, we're not gonna ride it that way, so I'm alright leaving that for a second and I can get the front wheel on. And taking the front brake pad spacer out here you need to be able to take that out that's your rotor's going to fit right in that space so when you are putting your front wheel in you gotta aim nicely and and get it in there uh, i'm gonna go ahead and grab my wrench and get that ready i'm gonna go up and in might need to unscrew these a little bit to give myself a little bit more room and up and in. I'm gonna drive my knee up pretty heavily here to center up the wheel. Also looking to see that it's centered in between the two uh, fork legs. And then we've got the uh, wrench here. Come in and tighten down. Initially, I'm just going to get them a little snug, make sure that it's not sliding around in the dropout. And then I'll come back to do the full tighten. It's pretty snug on there, actually. Wrench is a little... Yeah, socket would probably be a little bit... wonder if the... Maybe a little bit of the paint that's on there. Might have made it a little bit tighter tolerances than what they... Go ahead and snag mine. Nice and snug there. Yeah, we like the, like the ratchet wrenches like that. Now how should people think about tension as far as that for a bolt on like that? I mean, I guess I've never really heard a torque spec for the bolt-ons, to be quite honest. Um, pretty stinking tight is what we've always done in the industry. Um, not to say that there isn't a torque spec, and you might want to look that up in the owner's manual and see what they say. Um, you know, I always refer back to the owner's manual when, when I'm a little lost on that. I've always, always just tightened these down nice and snug. You know, it is going to be a steel axle on this one, so... Uh, you'd have to be kind of gorilla strength to really strip something like that out. Um, but yeah, nice and snug is a, is a good rule of thumb on that. Get this all set. Huh? Oh, that's already pretty loose. Huh? Probably somewhere in there. We can always come back to that. It's nice having a longer Allen key here because obviously you have the light there and the display when you're setting, putting together an electric bike can sometimes be a bit tricky. You can see that display is actually loosened up so it can move out of the way a little bit. Yeah, it is nice to have a, a T handle for stuff like this. It gets a little, little messy in here. Uh, these important stem bolts are going to be something that we want to make sure we're tightening up with a with a torque wrench. It's a four millimeter on here, the Allen key. 
There we go. That light slides down where you can get in there. And uh, I'll go grab my torque wrench quick. And this torque wrench just hits its breaking point and you can keep tightening with it, but as soon as you get the click, that's when you stop tightening. I can kind of... Again, I always like to offset my handlebars, knowing that I need to adjust it and figure it out once I set it on the ground. And then we can go ahead and start in on the, the other parts of this. So wheels torqued on there. The stem is all set to go, well, until we set it down. Um, and then from here, I'd probably start in on the, uh, the derailleur system and the shifting. So let's see here. Get through and got a little bit of a rub on the uh, rotor there. We'll have to adjust that out in the brake. But for now, we're seeing how the uh, adjustments are. And we did this on a different video, but checking to see how the limits are on the derailleur. And that's going to limit whether the chain is going to come off to the and drop down to where it could get jammed in here in the frame. And then we're also going to check and see if it can go off into your wheel here. So what I'm doing is putting a little bit of pressure back here on this pivot point on the derailleur. I'm actually pulling out towards me this way from the back. I'm going to just pedal it while I'm doing that to see if the limit screws are set. And you do want to be careful when you're doing this because then you could do exactly what we're trying to prevent here and take it right into the frame. And with my pressure on there, I can see that it's not, it's not going to take it into the frame and the limit screw is set. So we've got our two limits here uh, to set for it. And then the other way, I'm going to go ahead and shift it all the way up and it does look like it's going to want to pop off there so I'm going to go the other way with my tension so I'm going to go back here and then the thumb's going to press on this part of the derailleur right here so I'm going to give it a little test and see if it can push off and I bet we're going to see yep the chain wants to slide right off so the limit is not set correct out of the box on this which is entirely normal uh, when doing bike builds. This is something that uh, I have to do on every bike is check the limit screws. And they can be a little bit different on every, every bike model as far as that goes. So I actually look underneath here and what's gonna prevent that from going is this screw right here. And it has too much play so then we're going to go ahead and give it about a half turn on there. And then I'm going to see if it's going to do it still. And I think it will. It, this one's pretty far. Eh, yeah, it starts to creep off there, off, off the cog. So give it just a little bit more here. These are usually pretty little adjustments. So this one was off a little bit more. Still going to creep off. Tighten that down a little bit more. Now that I'm pushing on it, it's not creeping off. And we've got our limit set. You know, actually, after doing all the limit screw adjustments, it does, does make me go, oh, really ought to have checked the derailleur hanger alignment first to see if that might have been the issue. Because if you're setting your limits and your derailleur hanger piece right here is bent a little bit, then we might have to redo them all once we realign this derailleur hanger. How's it look from the back there? I think it looks pretty good. Pretty good. Do the uh, expert look. One of the cool things when we unbox this bike is it does come with a replacement, which is really nice because, of course, in shipping, that can get damaged quite easily if something just hits that just right. And so that's a nice thing that they include, so you don't have to worry about bending it. You just throw on the new one, and you'd be good to go. Yeah, that is really nice. I mean, that is a very common one. I would say 
probably even 10% of bikes uh, that are shipped to bike shops have a bent derailleur hanger upon shipping. And so, you know, there is a specific tool to bend this back. And it's nice when you don't have to use that. And as you, you know, as a consumer, you're not going to have that tool either. And it's, it's also, you know, not that cheap of a service. You know, most, most bike shops are going to cost, you know, 30 to $40 just to bend this back um, and get that aligned. So that it actually might be more if they had to replace it too, because then you're going to have to drop out the rear wheel and, and, uh, take this little piece out. But, you know, it is really nice that they do give you an extra one because it is a fairly fragile piece. It is designed to break off. So, you know, it doesn't damage your frame. Um, if they had that integrated into the frame, then you'd have, you know, broken frame instead of a broken $20, $30 piece of metal. <laughs> So we've got that aligned on the uh, on the limit screws. You're right, Ryan. The derailleur hanger alignment looks pretty darn good on there. Um, and then I'm just going to go through and see how it's shifting through the gears now. So we're up in the that gear, and we'll just take it through the paces and. Hey, that's what we like to see. Then I don't even get to show you how to do adjustments on the camera. So if it was a little slow in one direction or the other, um, which is really not bad, uh, you would end up end up turning it out to go up through the range or down to go through the range. So it'd be screwing it in to go down and out to go up. So that's going to just adjust how the chain is on on each cog, um, and this is this is the barrel adjuster that we had used to do that. Um, you know, pretty basic operation on this, and uh, as you get higher gears, it gets a little bit trickier. So these uh, these seven or eight speed um, drive trains are going to be a little bit easier to adjust, which is nice. And I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of your screen if you want to see a video of a bike build that Matt did where he did do some adjustments if you do need help with that. Cool. So we're all right on that. All right. Probably get the rear brake aligned. That was rubbing pretty good. All right. So I got my uh, white background set up to where I can go ahead and adjust my my rear disc brake caliper. So when we're spinning it here, the issue is we've got some rub. We're going to try to eliminate that by centering the brake caliper. I don't know if you can get it on the camera there, but you can see this side of the brake caliper and brake pad actually is hitting. So we're going to go ahead and loosen here. That's a tricky one to get in. Loosen on both of those. You just want to loosen it enough to where you can start to move that caliper. This is going to be a little bit tricky starting to track on me one way or another, so I'm going to have to hold it while I'm tightening it. The more I tighten it, yeah, that wasn't too bad, so I still need to come over here and tighten this one. That is a tricky one to get in to do, though. If I didn't have this wrench, it might be kind of tricky to get in there with a different one. Yeah, as I'm tightening it down, it's kind of sliding around on the actual caliper mount. This is going to be one of the trickier things to do as a home mechanic. Yeah. 
And this actually is something that I've seen on a few of these Adventons. The mount here has a little bit of paint on it. And that may be causing the brake caliper to shift on this mount when we're tightening it all down. So we have a little bit of an uneven surface on here. Um, it might just be a little bit more tricky or it's possible we might need to take the brake caliper all the way off and go ahead and, uh, and kind of sand down that surface or face it. There's an actual tool to do it in the shop setting, a disc brake facing tool. Um, you can go ahead and take a, a flat file to get some of that paint off, but you really got to be careful not to take any of the metal down. And that's where you'd need like shop help at that point and an actual facing tool to do that. And I got to be honest, that is probably one of the bigger things that I see on direct to consumer bikes is going to be the, the disc brake mounts are a little bit, um, have a little bit more paint on them or they're not faced as clean as some of the some of the like big top brands although I have seen plenty of the top brands not have their their brake mounts faced too so I'm gonna see if I can get in there with a different one and as I tighten that down hopefully it's not gonna move it over but as I tighten it down, that's when the contact surfaces are likely to move. That's feeling pretty good. And it looks like it might not hit. We got the tiniest little rotor rub there. Can't even hear that. And maybe just once you get up to speed, you'd be able to hear it. I'm going to go ahead and use my rotor truing tool to get that out. This is another one that your average person isn't going to have. Uh, the DT-2 from Park Tool. And we've got that white mat down there to see the spacing. And what I'm going to look to do is see where that rotor is just barely touching the pad. And right, right there is where it's going to be. So then I got to kind of mark it with my finger and come back and give it just the slightest little bend. Well, that kind of made it look easy. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things to do in the industry is to true a rotor, if you ask me. Maybe it's just one of those personal things that I struggle with. I'm a master wheel builder and I still have a hard time bending rotors back, but I've been doing it for long enough now that it's not, not as tricky. That's going to be a hard one to get out for your average person though. You know, it's, uh, you might have a little tick in your brake or you might have to take it into a bike shop. Um, uh, I could see someone struggling for, you know, 40 minutes to do that. And, uh, you could also end up with a pretty bent rotor. So, you know, at some point it bring it into your local shop and, Hopefully they'd be willing to work with an e-bike um, as long as they're just working on the mechanics of it and not the motor. So, yeah. Well, we've got that one adjusted. Might as well go around to the front and see if that one's where that one's at. Move our pad up here. Hey. <laughs> Again, we're going to loosen this and this. Same thing on this one. I think we're going to have a little bit of a bent rotor that's going to need to be trued out. And when I'm tightening it down, and it is shifting over a little bit too. So then it's kind of a two-handed jab. You want to make sure you're not touching your rotor as well and not cutting your hand on it. Applied. 
tighten that bottom one down and it moves right over. There we go. So I did go ahead and have to put kind of back pressure on it here while tightening so the caliper didn't shift and move over. Again, that's probably going to be from, you know, the, the painted surface on the, on the fork. Um, just a little bit of unevenness when you go to tighten it down. All those things that are sitting together kind of shift and move. And so I had to kind of hold it while tightening it so it didn't move it in too much. And now we've got no rotor rub when we're spinning it. And it's good to see here after a few squeezes if it's going to be. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. So... Um, yeah, we'll have to go over the brake bedding process a little bit later, which is always nice to do, but that's, uh, that's working good there. Shifting's good. All right. So we're just going to do some of the adjustments now that we got this, uh, bike down and out of the stand. So, uh, first it's going to be aligning our wacky handlebars that we'd never ride like that. And just loosen this up. They do not make a tool for this that I'm aware of to align your stem and handlebars and all of that. So that's, you just have to have a good, uh, good eyeballs on that one. And putting a little bit of load on the bearings. That's usually around four Newton meters to torque that. You don't really need to torque it. You just really need to get your bearing feel to where it's putting enough uh, compression on it. I'm just going to get that aligned. And five mil up top, four mil on the side. I'm gonna just snug that and then I gotta go get my torque wrench too. Oh, wouldn't you know it, I got it in my apron. So come over here, hit that. We got a max of 10 Newton meters coming in. There we go. Handlebar position doesn't look too bad. Let me see how it is when I'm on the bike. Yeah, I think I'd probably rotate these down just a little bit to where they're not tilting so much at me. Probably somewhere in there. There we go. Approximate our light. Get that. That's a four mil as well. Max of five Newton meters on that. And then we just gotta get our little little Allen key for those. And check the headset for wobble once we've tightened it down. So you, you do that by holding down the front brake and then feeling right here and you're going to kind of rock the bike back and forth. And if it needed an adjustment, this part would feel wobbly on your fingers. You might feel a little bit of wobble just from the fork and the way that everything attaches down here, but we're feeling right up here. You just want to make sure that that's snug on your bearing system to where feels good and smooth when you're turning. Yeah, it is a two. Do not go tight on a, on a two mil. Just enough to where it's not going to move around easily. Yeah, and you can just strip out the screw head so easy as well. Just snug. There we go. All right. I think we are all set on that then. 
can uh, definitely come back and hit the uh, brake calipers with the torque wrench. That's about the only other thing that uh, that I feel like I might want to do on it. That one I'm just not going to be able to get in. Even if I had the, the longer extension, I think I think it would be just too much to get in there. Maybe. What are you torquing those two? Six Newton meters. Yeah, we were pretty close. Only, only about an eighth of a turn on all of those. So, all right. All right, we'll tighten this down and then I think it'll be uh, time for a test ride. All right, I thought now that we have the bike built up, just thought I'd give you my initial impressions. I did go ahead and install the rear rack. That was really simple, just with some attachment points there. Nice sturdy rear rack. And I have to say, I really like this red color. It's actually more of a cranberry type red as opposed to a true red, but I think it looks really sharp. Really nice paint job there. Really like the cable management coming in to both sides here. Of course, you got the Venton logo, the light here attached to the handlebars. That's a little bit more unique. A lot of times you'll see it attached right here by the front fender. These are metal fenders, pretty nice. Feel nice and solid, plenty of clearance. I do like that they brand it here, a Venton. And actually this bar was a little bit bent when I received the bike, but I was able to bend it back. And as you saw, we got the hydraulic disc brakes all lined. Those are perfect. Really like these Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. Definitely a highlight of this electric bike. You get nice locking grips as well, really like that. And up here in the front, you get nice Shimano, eight speed trigger shifter. And then we have the integrated battery. It comes out to the side here. Of course, I'll showcase that in my full review. And I really like the step through frame. That's just going to be very accessible. You have a little bit of rise on these handlebars as well to put you in a little bit more of an upright riding position. So overall, very impressed with the Aventon Adventure. Again, if you are looking to purchase an Aventon electric bike, please consider using the link in the description. It really helps me make videos like this one. I really wanna continue reviewing the Aventon lineup because I think they offer pretty good value. They also have retail locations across the United States, so that makes them a little bit more unique, but excited to do this review, so be sure to subscribe if you want to be notified when that review is live. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.